Life as a Swifty is often a long slog. With Taylor Swift's career trajectory having a tumultuous journey of ups and downs, from her debut as country pop crossover girl next door to global pop domination, from being cancelled to redeeming her image and gaining critical and commercial acclaim at new heights after the folklore and evermore eras and the beginning of her Taylor's version re-releases. You never know as a fan whether it's cool to declare you love blasting the Swift in your headphones or not. Swifties have a ferocious online reputation and there's a general culture of insanity tied to being a fan of the biggest artist on the planet. Being such a big artist comes with criticisms, whether that be her talent, her vocals, her consumption of fuel on private jets and her estimated now billionaire status. But one thing that's always made loving Taylor Swift easy for me was that the music always speaks for itself. I hate to say it, but after the Grammys last night and the announcement of yet another new album, even as a huge Taylor Swift fan, I'm burnt out, those who dislike Taylor Swift and her near-universal domination for the past few years make no secret of the fact they're sick to the back teeth of her. You don't need to scroll for long on Twitter slash X for long to find some disdain towards her. For years and for obvious I'm a big fan reasons, I have ignored such complaints. Taylor Swift might be prolific, but she's also incredible. Folklore and Evermore are two of the greatest albums of the last decade and feature the best songwriting of her career. The Taylor's version re-releases of Fearless and Red helped shine new light and acclaim on two great albums that now sounded as mature as her later career did, with new additions that won over new fans of those albums who didn't really care for them when they first dropped, including myself. All Too Well, 10-minute version, was a cultural phenomenon and deserved all its acclaim. For my money, it's her best song. These couple of years at the start of the 2020s were an imperial phase, but then for me things started to shift that I'd say my Taylor Swift fatigue kicked in with Midnight's being a bit of a mid-album. Despite huge chart success and some genuinely great songs, the whole record admittedly does feel a bit phoned in, Swift by numbers. It sounds worse after the game-changing triumphs of Folklore and Evermore. Couple Midnight's not being up there with her later great work and a huge tour that you couldn't escape clips of and two Taylor's versions releasing that didn't quite match the excellence of her first two and you can start to understand why the Taylor Swift fatigue has begun to kick in. Even for those of us who worship the ground she walks on.